Hello everybody and welcome again. Today I would like to talk about Wind Dancer Flutes and the man behind Wind Dancer Flutes. Roger McGee. Roger McGee was the very first flute maker that I ever worked with. And I had the opportunity to meet Roger and go into his workshop and meet his lovely wife. And actually there is a very, very incredible story behind it. Um, it gets pretty crazy actually. Um, I was emailing back and forth with Roger and we just kind of hit it off emailing back and forth and talking and he lives in the Wallawa Valley um, where my native tribe is actually from. If you don't know, I'm Nez Perce. My family's Nez Perce, originally actually from the Culver Reservation, but we're from Chief Joseph's Band and Chief Joseph's Band lived right there on the Wallawa Mountains and in, and in the valley right there where Roger lives um, in Eastern Oregon. And we really hit it off, just started talking about all that stuff and he lives right there and I grew up fishing there as a little boy um, right by where he lives, by the Snake River and the Powder River and everything like that. And we just started talking and I went one December, believe it or not, um, me and my wife went and we drove up uh, to Eastern Oregon to spread my father's ashes in the Snake River. And uh, I had held on to my father's ashes for a very long time and wasn't sure what I was going to do. And finally, um, I decided to spread his ashes in the Snake River where me and him had camped along the riverbank so many times and fished and... Um, just spent a lot of time when I was a little boy and I got to take my wife up to see that country and I just kind of had a spur of the moment decision and I wanted to do it in December of all time, which is kind of crazy because it was snowing. It was uh, really rough and we took this old uh, 90s Ford Ranger that we still have um, and we took it up there to spread my father's ashes and part of that trip was also to meet Roger. So we went up there and uh, we stayed in um, Joseph, Oregon, in a little cabin. And there was ice everywhere, but we just had our four wheel drive fixed and got new hubs on our truck. And so we figured we could go anywhere. And I wanted to act like I was some sort of local. And, and I took my wife on a back roads trip to take her to Richland, Oregon, which is actually where my, my, um, father grew up and where my grandpa was and um i feel like this whole story is a part of the roger thing too so i just wanted to tell it so we um we took the trip and we took a back road and ended up in the middle of the woods on a very very over snowed road that was basically only accessible to um, snowmobiles and i kicked it into four-wheel drive and before i knew it we were in the middle of the woods and things got silent and we drove on that road for about an hour and a half with the four-wheel drive engaged nice and slow uh, both of us pretty scared because we didn't bring proper things with us to sleep overnight in the snow um, it was really far out in the middle of nowhere so no one really knew where we were um, but we made it so it was uh, we will always remember that and so we made it to Richland um, I showed my wife a little town. We walked into this store. There was actually a picture of my dad um, in the store because people would, you know, they would share their their uh, fishing pictures. And there was still a picture of my dad from many years before. And uh, I went and met with Roger the following day. We drove back uh, to the cabin a much safer way. We didn't take the same road back. And I went and met with Roger on the last day that we were going to be in town and met his lovely wife and uh, told him the story. And I did not know that this was going to happen, but when I showed up, he surprised me with this flute. This flute right here. This is my coyote drone flute from Roger. And he surprised me with it. And um, I got you know a little teary-eyed and uh 
gave Roger a big hug and he just showed me the rest of his workshop. I got to really see it. Um, all of his clay workings, his bronze workings, his paintings, his music, his flutes. He is not just a flute maker. He is an everything maker. He can make anything beautiful art. And really it was mind blowing to be in his studio and to see his craft up front. We shared stories. Um, he showed me how to play the mountains with my flute. You know, you just look at the mountains and you just follow the peaks and you just go up the note and down the note. And he showed me how to do that and I never even thought about it. So me and Roger became good friends. And um, over the next handful of months, these flutes started showing up at my doorstep. And uh, I have a seven. Uh, I have a total of seven of of his flutes of Rogers Wind Dancer flutes, and they're very recognizable. No one makes flutes like he like he does. Um, he told me a story how he taught Fred Keems how to make flutes, and so if you look at Fred Keems flutes, there's a little bit of similarity, but they're still just very unique. Got a coyote, with a hand carved coyote. Just amazing. So I got to meet Roger. I got to see his workshop and meet his wonderful wife. And I've gotten to play his flutes. And these flutes are actually the flutes that I used on my very first solo flute record, um, Coyote in the Heart of the Monster. And what I did with these flutes is I went into the studio and I said a prayer with each flute before I played. And then I played. And whatever came out is what got recorded with that flute. And um, that's what ended up on the album. And it was pretty neat. You know, I think seven flutes, you know, seven is such a sacred number in so many different faiths. Um, and for me at that time, it was the seven directions. And I don't know if Roger meant to do that or not. Um, but I'm very thankful to Roger. So Roger, thank you. Um, for everything you've done for me. Uh, he really had faith in me when a lot of other flute makers didn't. And he set me on my journey. He gave me so much motivation and he believed in me so much and would give me the best compliments and just say wonderful things to me over email and over the phone and and um, really told me that I, was on, that I was on the right path and I was going the right way. So I'm going to put the link to his website um, in the description below. So please check him out. Um, he's not, you know, cranking out flutes like he used to. I think he's really enjoying uh, life with his wife and, and uh, just living. You know what I mean? So he does have, you know, some flutes for sale and they're amazing. But if you get one, you're lucky because they are one of a kind, each one of them. Um, just amazing, just amazing. So Roger McGee, everybody, Wind Dancer Flutes. That's my story of meeting Roger and getting my first Wind Dancer Flute. And I will treasure these flutes forever. I'm never getting rid of them. They're just, uh, they're very, 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 very special to me. So thanks everyone for hanging out with me today. Send Roger an email, tell him I sent you. And uh, you can listen to these flutes on my album, Coyote in the Heart of the Monster which is on Spotify and all that other fun stuff. So thanks again, guys. Have a great day, and I will see you soon.